This story contains adult language and adult content, and it's been rated W for which. And that's me. Should be rated R for Rosalita, but whatever. Mm. Enjoy the witch's gloves. I was on the rooftop of the witch's house. The four of us were crouched down, hiding from the witch hunters. Their hooded master came closer to the door. He had his hands out as if touching the door would give him the answers. Janice got onto her knees and spread her fingers across the floor below. Cersei, protect this house. Don't let him see us. See us, see us. It was a chilling moment. Even the three boys watched him nervously. Janice grinded her teeth. Were we about to be found out? Rhiannon, what's going on? I don't know. Be prepared to fly out of here. What? I don't know how to fly. Oh, fuck this. Rosie! Rosalie just jumped clear into the air above everyone's head until she reached the first tree. The boy seemed to look up and around too late. Suddenly, a screech came from the trees. What the hell was that? It sounds like a bat. Quiet, boys. I'm trying to concentrate. You mean like one of those giant blood-sucking bats? In Salem? Vampire bat! <laughs> Idiot! Don't you shoot your gun in the air! You're gonna alert the witches! Forget it. I can't sense their presence here anyway. Let's get out of here before you all become dinner for the giant bats. They'd certainly be doing me a favor getting rid of you all. I'm sorry, Master. See what you did, Tom? I keep telling you. They probably hide in some rich, snobby mansion in town with all the gold they steal. Seriously, who the hell would want to live out here? Hippies? We were relieved the three boys started running back into the woods. Before the master could leave, he looked up at the ceiling. I could just barely make out his face. It looked familiar, but not familiar enough. Janice was eyeing him angrily. So it is you. The hooded master turned back and walked away, leaving Rihanna and I to sigh in relief. <sighs> so who was that, Janice? The one locked me in a cell. He's got young blood working for him now. He uses God's will to hunt witches? I'm not entirely sure. He claims to be doing all of this in the name of God, but he's closer to the devil than any witch I've ever known. <laughs> no need to thank me. I truly am a marvel among- Ow! When I tell you to sit here, you sit here. You understand me, Rosalita? But I scared them away. And you almost got shot. You need to stop being so reckless, you stupid- Lady Janice, please. She was only trying to help. I'm sorry. Look, they're gone now. It doesn't seem like they'll be coming back. Let's not let this scare take away from Grace's initiation tomorrow. You're right. I'm sorry, Grace. Go back to bed with Rhiannon. I'll keep an eye out tonight. Rosalita will stay by my side. We have much to discuss. Thank you. You okay? Is this what being a witch is going to be like on a nightly basis? I promise you it won't be. And besides, I'll do whatever I can to protect you, my love. Let's get some sleep. <sighs> Rosalita, I understand that you desire to flaunt your powers. No, you don't, Janice. You just want me hidden away like some prisoner. Watch your tongue. You have no idea what it's like to be held captive for years, each day wondering if this is going to be the day they take you outside and put a bullet through your head. I know what it's like to hold a gun to my own head, wanting to just end it all because, really, what's the point of living if you can't make your own choices in life? There is always a choice you can make, but you need to stay alive to do so. You take your life, then they win. I don't care who wins, Janice. I didn't sign up for some stupid cat and mouse game. I didn't choose to be a witch. I just am one. I didn't choose to be one either. Don't you ever dream of just being able to fly in the sky whenever you want? Not worried about someone shooting you down? I wish I could dream things like that. All I ever see when I sleep is the interior of that cell. Well, sometimes I dream of coming in to save you. I wish I could have. I would have gotten you out of there and then tied every one of those motherfuckers who put you there inside the cell and see how they like it. And then I'd light the cell on fire and watch them burn. 
just like they've watched us burn for centuries. <laughs> it's not like that hasn't crossed my own mind, but then how would I be any different from them? It's different. It's an eye for an eye. <sighs> eye for an eye. Another primitive practice of the patriarchy. When does the violence stop? I don't know. I'm just... I'm pissed off, I'm stressed out, and... I'm horny. Hush now, pet. Take my hand. You're sleeping with me tonight. Are you gonna use your gloves on me? Should I be scared? No more questions. The morning light seemed so different to me. Coming back onto the rooftop, the colors were more vibrant. It was like every leaf on a nearby tree had its own distinct shade of green. I could even see a few changing color for autumn. My body felt sore, but stronger. Like I had done a rigorous workout at the gym, if I ever actually went to the gym. My gloves were still in my hands, keeping them warm. I wondered what they looked like underneath. But when I moved my fingers, I could feel some sense of energy I had never experienced before. Hey, did you manage to get any sleep? Not really. Well, you definitely sleep tonight. We have a lot to get through on your first day as a witch. <laughs> Do I get any college credits for this? No, but you can certainly make it up to your professor later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your name. You need to choose a magic name. Magic name? Yeah, it's tradition. And at school, I'm Stephanie. It protects my identity. Oh. Well, I don't know what to choose. Well, Rosalita and I both chose song names. Any song name come to mind for you? Hmm, how about... Layla. Layla! I like it. Layla, before you step into this circle, you must undertake this path on your own free will. And for the good of yourself and the good of our Mother Earth, you must promise to keep the identity of your fellow witches secret and help protect them from harm. I promise. And you must leave all fears and doubts outside the circle. Even after last night? That is the outside world. It is always full of dangers. Within this circle of myself, Rosalita and Rhiannon, you must give us your undying love and trust. <sighs> okay. Step towards me. In this coven, we don't exclusively worship any god or goddess or Satan. I do. <laughs> Shh. But we do pray to Circe, the ancient Greek enchantress and maybe the first witch. Her strength and spirit lives in all of us. And by praying to her, we can also pray to the great cosmos and find the strength in ourselves to do as we must. Do you enter this circle in Circe's name? I do. Rhiannon, give her the chalice and repeat after me. I am the child of Circe, and I ask her to bless me. I am a child of Circe, and I ask her to bless me. You may drink. By the earth that is her body, by the air that is her breath, by the fire that is her bright spirit, by the waters of her womb. As above, so below. The circle is cast, so mote it be. Welcome to our coven, Layla. Blessed be. Blessed be. So, can we drink now? Yep, we drank, we danced, we ate chocolate ice cream. We hadn't even had breakfast yet, and Rhiannon kissed me several times. Sure felt like some crazy sorority, but soon after, it was time to get down to business. Janice gave me many books to read about witchcraft, history, herbs, my own personal spell book, and astronomy. If anybody asks where you are, you're studying astronomy with Anna Knight. Anna Knight? Who's that? <laughs> me. I'm a grad student of astronomy with her own independent study since Salem College's science department is underfunded, this is an exclusive research group to discover the majesty of the cosmos. Only understanding the cosmos helps us understand our powers. You've got it. 
Well, this would definitely add to my workload if I was to continue attending college. Rosalita ended up sewing some new clothes for me with magic thread. This was part of the protection spell Rihanna had mentioned. I thought maybe it turned you invisible, but it was actually more about deflecting evil eyes. And who knew Rosalita was such a talented seamstress? Well, almost. Ow! Would you hold still, Blondie? I would if you stopped poking me. Ugh! Where did you learn to sew anyway? My original craft master. She was an actual seamstress and a Satanist. She taught me everything I knew, but... Well, let's just say she went a little too dark even for me. Janice likes to think she saved me. Saved you from what? Oh, the life of a sadist, a petty thief, a nympho, I don't know. Rihanna mentioned something about- Yeah, I know. She told you I'm a whore. Well, not exactly. Ow! I told you to hold still. Not that I'm ashamed, mind you. I'm a witch. The whole point is not to be bound by monogamy or have strict emphasis on orientation or even gender. Maybe one night I want Lady Janice to dominate me. Maybe another night I want to find some weak college boy toy who will submit to me. Makes things more interesting. I mean, I know you'll think I'm dumb, but I wish to settle down with one person. That's your choice. Just like people in general, not all witches are the same. And I'll tell you this. If I had someone look at me the way Rhiannon looks at you, I might consider settling down with them as well. Emphasis on might. Hmm. Now hold still, Blondie. Ow! After surviving Rosalita's hemming, Rhiannon took me to the woods at sunset and helped me channel energy through my body. Shouldn't I take my gloves off? How am I going to shoot light from my fingers? <laughs> Your fingers aren't pistols, Layla. It doesn't work that way. They act more as a guide for energy to flow. That's what I mean when I say the gloves protect your energy. It's also why we dance for these rituals. To loosen up, feel the energy flowing through your body. And besides, it's fun. We danced together all while the sun and moon changed guard. Rhiannon soon began to show off her amazing skills. She could float in the air, spin around like a ballerina. She could make other objects levitate, including me. She could make flowers appear in her hand like a magician. And yes, she blasted a beam of light into the air. It was amazing to see. When she tried to show me how it was done, I realized it wasn't so easy. I told you you're not going to be able to do it in one day. What about making fire like Rosalita did? Rosalita has chosen fire as her focus. She thinks it makes her more dangerous and closer to the fires of hell. Don't worry, Janice chills her out. I think it's getting kind of late. Why don't we turn in for a nightcap? Okay. The weekend was truly amazing. The real world of witches was more magical than any Halloween cartoon could ever make it out to be. And for the first time in my life, I had a group of friends who supported me. But come Monday, it was time to return to the real world. Rana and I would have to return to classes. Homework had reminded us of that. But standing at the door with Janice acting like our mother was very odd. She had practically chosen our outfits for us dark colors, but not explicitly witch robes. Rosalita had woven them with magic thread and blessed them with a protection spell. Of course, I was wearing the black gloves Rihanna had given me, but with my family's rings on top of them. At least I hadn't completely changed my identity. Be proud of who you are, but also be careful not to reveal too much or be too trusting of people. Layla, stay close to Rhiannon. I'll take care of her. I feel like people are going to gossip about us being together. I would. Let them gossip. In fact, I want us to hold hands on our way to school. Um, I don't know what- Would if... you two get out of here so Janice and I can finally have some privacy? There was a difference in the air compared to the week before. It was a bit cooler. The breeze was a lot stronger. The sky was filled with clouds, but still allowing sunlight in. Of course, the biggest difference was that I had a girlfriend and we stepped into campus holding hands with matching black witches gloves. People began to stare at us. They whispered in each other's ears. Rhiannon walked in with confidence, but I must have been blushing. This is the coffee shop you were talking about? Um, yeah. I hope they make tea. Grace? Oh, Bobby. Hi, how are you? You look different. No white gloves today? No, I, uh, well, Rhian, um, Stephanie. She gave them to me. Hello. Oh, uh, Stephanie. 
your grace's uh friend oh well uh nice to meet you i guess you both decided to get into the halloween spirit early this year you could say that well that's cool oh let me get my coffee sorry you didn't tell him you were my girlfriend we don't need to spell everything out for everyone <laughs> i guess you're right now came the most awkward part u.s history class I slowed down as Rhiannon and I walked into the room together, still holding hands. The entire class seemed to stop and stare at us all in sync. No this included Christine, whose jaw dropped. Be proud of who you are. Janice's words echoed in my mind. So I took a deep breath, stuck my chest out, tightened my grip on Rhiannon's hand, and we walked to our seats. This time, I took a seat right next to her. Grace? Wh where have you been? I've been trying to call you all weekend! Sorry, I was studying with Stephanie. I told you she was taken under the witch's spell. Now she's turned her into one. I can hear you, you know. Seriously, there was another attack in the forest. I was worried about- Okay, let's get this American Revolution underway, shall we? Who wants independence? Independence? Um... Jesus, even my professor was surprised to see me like this. Oh, I said Jesus. When I should be saying Cersei. I was obviously still getting used to all this. Fortunately, everyone focused on the lecture, even if Christine kept looking my way. Maybe hearing about America's fight for independence meant something different to me this time, since I was experiencing my own independence. After class, Christine practically grabbed my arm. Grace, can I talk to you privately? Okay, okay. Sorry, Stephanie. I'll be right back. I'll be here. Wait, don't leave me alone with... <laughs> So, uh, are you going to hypnotize me? No, you're not worth it. What do you mean I'm not worth it? I'm totally worth hypnotizing. I'd be the best witch there is. Grace, what is going on? Nothing's going on. Bullshit! For a month you've refused to even let me see you without those damn white gloves on, and now over the weekend you're wearing the witch's gloves? You're holding her hand? Are you in a cult? It's not a cult. And why are you suddenly so concerned? All you've done is mock me for being the good girl with white gloves. Everyone has. Now I'm making a change in my life and you think there's something wrong with me? <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to judge you. It's just, you're my roommate and my friend. And, well, with all these stories in the news, I just, I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Nothing bad has happened to me, Christine. Honestly, for the first time in my life, I feel like I've awoken, if that makes any sense. Also, I'm planning on moving in with my study group. You mean, we won't be roommates anymore? I'll come back later this week to pack up my stuff. See ya. Everything okay? Fine. Grace, can you explain to her that I am worth mind controlling? Christine and I were able to have a heart-to-heart -heart when I came to pick up my things later in the week. I didn't reveal too much, but I did let her know I was happy. Don't worry, I'll still see you in class. We can do lunch together. Maybe all four of us. Stephanie included. Well, if this is really what you want... Thanks for understanding, Christine. Here, why don't you take my white gloves? I won't be needing them anymore. Maybe you can wear them. <laughs> I still never understood why you wear these. They're so... Actually... They feel kind of nice. Christine held my hand before I left. It was my old white glove. The glove of my old self. Holding onto my new black glove. What represented my rebirth. There was still something so melancholic about all this. Like my old life was trying not to let me go. But I walked out the door saying goodbye to my dorm mate and headed out the street. That's when another hand grabbed my attention. One without gloves. Grace! Oh, Reverend Miller. I didn't see you in service last Sunday. Oh, sorry. I was busy studying. I'm part of a new astronomy group. Why are you dressed like that? You're dressing like that goth girl you mentioned. In fact, you were supposed to bring her to see me. Well, like I said, we were studying and... <sighs> you know, I'm sorry. I need to go. Don't worry about me. Just a minute there, young lady. I can't just stand by and watch you go down whatever perverted path this girl has you on. Perverted? Excuse me? I know this rebellious facade seems like it's all in good fun, but is it worth your soul? 
Who I choose to hang out with is none of your concern. You're not my father. I'm only trying to protect you, Grace. I don't need to be protected. Just leave me alone. I was running so fast down the street. The once kindly presence of Reverend Miller suddenly felt like those intruders who came to my house on the first night. I wish I was able to fly away. At that moment, I just wanted Rhiannon. I couldn't run into the record shop fast enough. Grace, what's wrong? I just... I... It's okay. It's okay, my love. Come on, let's get you home. Soon I forgot about Reverend Miller, as Rhiannon helped me put away what was left of my old life. And, well, Rhiannon pinning me to bed really helped relieve my anxiety. Dear Circe, what a life I now leave. But, lying together afterwards, with gloved arms around each other, there was still something keeping me from feeling completely at ease. Rhiannon, don't you ever desire to sleep together without gloves on? You know, like a normal couple? No. You know how I feel about being called normal. And honestly, I don't think I could feel anything without them now. Really? <laughs> Dear Cersei, all these years of wearing my gloves, I never thought of them like a... fetish. <laughs> it's not just about having a glove fetish, or not wanting to cover my scars, or accentuate my power. They're a part of who I am now, as a person. And they're a part of us, as a couple. I would never want to part with that feeling. I see. Maybe I want to share in that fact, too. In fact, why don't you wear one of my rings over your gloves? To safeguard them. Aren't they your family rings? Yeah, and... You are a part of my family now. Aww, Layla. It was true. Having a support group of fellow witches that I call my family really was the best medicine. Janice reminded me of that later when she came in and kept us company. Then, Rosalita came in with a big poster and a big smile on her face. Feast your eyes, ladies! The Witch's Halloween Sabbath at Salem Common Park. Come one and all for a wicked night of dancing, desserts, and delights. Warlocks welcome to BYOB. The night and delight rhyme just came right out. You two can put these up around campus, get all your stupid friends to dress up in their sluttiest witch garb. Are you out of your mind? Look, before you melt me, remember it's Halloween, the one day of the year you can go flying on a broomstick and everyone will think it's just a trick for the occasion. That's true. Our local car dealership used to do a lot of Halloween publicity stunts when I was growing up. Werewolves and bats and vampires. Oh my. First of all, we don't celebrate Halloween. It's a commercial bastardization of the pagan celebration Samhain. A time to honor the dead, not by candy and bulk. We can do both, Janice. If you want to find some wannabe witch or warlock to be your sex toy for the evening, that's your business. I will be celebrating Samhain alone, undercover, in the woods. Janice, how long are we going to stay in the shadows? How long are we all going to keep up these double lives? We keep talking about a day when we're no longer persecuted. Well... I don't know about you, but I want to be an out and proud witch on the one night I can be with people loving me for who I am. And yes, if I get laid in the process, blessed be. Ugh. I agree with Rosalita. Thank you, Layla. I realize today I'm going to have to face whatever life has to hurl my way sooner or later. I didn't choose to be a witch, but I am one. I'll come to the party with you, Rosalita, and I'll tell Christine and my other friends to dress up as well. Well, if you're going, I'm certainly going. Maybe we'll get to share a slow dance together. Come on, Janice! What better way to honor the dead than to celebrate life? And live life! <sighs> so be it. But I'm choosing the music. Yes! I have so much shopping to do! Halloween's still weeks away. Rihanna and I printed out some posters and put them up on campus. Even some of the local shops were more than happy to display it in their windows. One would even provide a big pumpkin for our celebration. For lunch, we met up with Christine and Nancy. It was interesting to note that Christine was still wearing my white gloves, and now even Nancy had a pair of black gloves. Maybe still trying to prove that she was worthy of being a witch. Sabbath? Like the band Sabbath? No, Sabbath is like a witch's version of Burning Man, if they burned living virgins instead. No one is getting burned. Hmm, I don't know. Rosalita might burn you alive for suggesting something like that. Grace, come on! 
Both of you don't really practice all this witchcraft stuff, do you? I had avoided telling Christine the exact details of my, well, my studies. I really wanted to tell her the truth, but Rhiannon spoke for me. Christine, you really shouldn't judge something you clearly know nothing about. Neither of you. Fine. So enlighten me. What's this witch Sabbath all about then? Hey, you girls talking about that witch party? Oh, hi, Bobby. Uh, Bobby, this is Christine, Nancy. I believe you know Stephanie. Hello. I hope you don't mind if I join you. That witch party sounds like a blast. I don't know what I should wear. I've never seen a warlock before. It's always good to start with black. Look, this is just meant to be an event where you can express yourself. Be you. Embrace your, I don't know, inner dark side. It's just a Halloween party where everyone dresses up like witches and uh, warlocks. Have fun. <sighs> All right. But if I see anything other than a pumpkin burning, I'm out of there. And Grace, maybe you could honor me with a dance. Oh, well, uh, I don't know. You can always dance with me, Bobby. Hey, the more the merrier. I looked at Rhiannon, seeing if she had any objections, but she just shrugged her shoulders and smiled. I figured she was secure enough in our relationship that she didn't need to worry about some handsome guy stealing me away for a dance. Or maybe she still just didn't want to make a scene and fear being found out more. The bigger question was, how much more would people find out about us on Halloween night? You've been listening to The Witch's Gloves, written and produced by Jim Savvy, starring Kendo Girl as Grace. Bree Frankel as Rhiannon. Renita Bowers as Janice. Mars Mentality as Rosalita. Danielle Ferguson as Christine. Elise Spencer as Nancy. And this story's very own witch law consultant. Samuel Baker as Bobby. Wilford Jones Gatlin as Samuel. Mike Farron as Jonathan. Justin Ali as Thomas. Webdoll as Professor Green. And Jim Savvy as Reverend Miller. Special thanks to Anna Kwan and Olivia Fairless for contributing to the artwork. The story continues in the next episode. Mm-hmm.